Chapter 23, The Witch's Plot Gaston was sitting down to a large banquet in his dining hall, which was heavily decorated with the various animals he'd killed during his many hunting excursions. The chair at the head of the table, at which he was seated, of course, was adorned with elk antlers and draped with animal skins and furs. His cleft chin was jutting out a bit farther than usual, which was a manifestation of his extreme good spirits. That is, until the Ott sisters clamored in, disturbing his banquet for one. Look here, foul witches. I won't have you popping in and out of my home unannounced. Sorry to disturb your meal, Gaston, but we have news that you might find interesting. Gaston slammed his knife into his wooden dining table. First you send that foul slinking creature to watch over me, and now this. Showing up whenever you desire, to make requests of me, no doubt. Ruby twitched her head to the right, about to speak. But it was Martha who defended Flans. She's not here to spy on you, Gaston. She's here to help you. Gaston's laugh rivaled the witch's own. It filled the hall and reverberated in the witch's ears. Help me? Help me? Why? I am the strongest, most attractive man in the village. The sisters stared blankly at him, wondering if he or anyone else really believed that. Yes, help you, Gaston. We found Belle, and she's on her way to her father now. Gaston fixed his gaze on the witches for the first time since they'd arrived. They had finally gotten his full attention. Their dresses were deep red, the exact shade of their lips, which were painted to look like a baby doll's. Their raven hair was fashioned in shoulder-length ringlets around their pale faces and adorned with large red plums. They were painfully thin and looked ludicrous in all their finery, like skeletal beings brought back from the dead to attend a fancy dress ball. You found Belle? Oh, yes. We found your dearest love, Ruby sang. She won't be able to resist you. Gaston looked at himself in the reflection of his shiny knife and said, Well, who can? Lucinda grinned, trying not to let Gaston detect her repulsion. We have arranged some assurances on the slightest chance she can. Gaston raised one brow in curiosity, but Martha continued before she could com com comment. Before he could comment. We would like you to meet a friend of ours, she said, with an evil smile cracking her white face her makeup causing her to look even more freakishly beautiful. A very dear friend who we th think would be more than happy to help you. Gaston had to wonder what sort of people the witches kept company with. His name is M Monsieur de Oc. He runs the sanitarium. Lucinda answered as if she heard his very thoughts. Gaston wasn't surprised that the sisters were friendly with the rapscallion who ran the sanitarium. Martha elaborated, Maurice, Belle's father, has been raving about a beast, has he not? Perhaps the sanitarium is just the place for him. Ruby twittered in delight when she added, though I'm sure there would be no need for him to be institutionalized if Belle were to marry you. I'm sure between the two of you, Maurice would be well taken care of. Gaston grasped their meaning instantly, and he was thunderstruck by the brilliance of the idea. He would, of course, take the credit for the idea entirely. Hmm. Poor old Maurice has been raving like a lunatic. Why, just the other night he was gibber gibbering incoherently about Belle being captured by a beast. See? You would be doing them both a favor if you married Belle. Someone needs to take care of the poor fellow.